So, number 13 then, from paper 2 of the 2021 National 5 resource paper. Three mark question here for similar shapes. The two photographs are mathematically similar. That means that one is an exact enlargement or reduction of the other. Similar shapes. Corresponding sides are in the same ratio. Corresponding areas are also in the same ratio, but that's a different ratio. So it gives you the dimensions here. It tells you the small photograph is 12 centimetres wide. You don't know the width of the big one, but you do know their areas. The small photograph is 80 square centimetres. The larger one is 500 square centimetres. And so you have to calculate what's this width then for three marks. Well, what you've got here is you can find the ratio of the areas. So I'm going to put it down as a ratio. You can put it down as a scale factor as well. But I'm just going to put it down as a ratio because when you've got the ratio and you've got the two numbers side by side, that gives you the flexibility to put them either way around. But when you put a scale factor down, you're sort of committing to having one number on top and one num number underneath. So I'm just going to stick for this for the area ratio. I'm just going to put the area ratio down, which is 80 to 500. Because the scale factor would be different depending on which way you went. If I wanted to work out a large area, my ratio would be 500 over 80. But if I wanted to work out a small one, I'd make it 80 over 500. However, that's correct both ways round. That is the ratio of the areas. And I could just appropriately use them whichever way round I want. So it's actually given you the first mark for stating the area scale factor, which isn't really necessary because I'm going to, not going to work at any area, so I'm going to put it there. Now, at that point, you could simplify it. But it is paper too, so it is a calculator, so you could just leave all the numbers like that because the calculator doesn't care. But I would have knocked that down because that can come down quite a lot. You can divide by 10. That makes it 8 and 50. And they half to 4 and 25, which is really very handy. There was no mark for doing that because it was a calculator paper, I suppose. Now, there's a connection between the area ratio and the length ratio. Because to get an area, you multiply a length by a length. So whatever that's been multiplied by, that's been multiplied by the same amount. So the area will be multiplied by both of them. That will be the square. So from the area ratio, you can get the length ratio by taking the square root. The length ratio would just be the square root of 4 to the square root of 25. Well, that's just 2 to 5. Now, there's no mark for that specifically. The mark didn't come until you started the calculation. So now, what is the width? Well, now I want the scale factor. That ratio gives me the scale factors both ways. I just use it appropriately. So if that's 12, and this is meant to be bigger, I put them whichever way round will give me a larger answer. So I'll put the 5 on top and the 2 underneath. So that goes 6 times 5 is 30. So 30 centimetres. So there was one mark for using the appropriate scale factor. Larger number on top. One mark for the answer. In the marking scheme, of course, it doesn't cancel it down because it didn't ask you to cancel it down. You just did that because it was supposed to look sensible to do that. They've just left it as 80 and 500, which you could do. So if you just left it as 80 and 500, when it came to working out the width, you would say, oh, well, it'll be bigger than the 12. So put the larger one on top and just leave it as root 500 and leave that as root 80, which obviously must give you the same answer. Would have to. So for number 14 then, for four marks, there's one of those rotating circle questions where you have to find the height, it's quite a common one, the height of some point in the circumference where the centre of the circle isn't on the x-axis. So there's always a constant amount up, you can see it's there. That must be the 57. And that 85 must be this radius. But you don't need to know that particularly because it's just a formula. And all you're going to do in part A for three marks is put 115 into the formula because what it says is the height of that rotating point as x changes as it rotates round is given by this formula. 57 minus 85 cos x. So what would the height be when that angle, sorry, what would the angle be when that reaches a height of 115. And the second part is, when's it next at that height? Because it'll be at that height twice, unless it happens to be at the very top, of course. 
because it'll get to that height here, then it'll go above it, and it'll be back at that height over here. And then it'll just keep repeating on and on. So the question actually says, when is it first at that height? Because it's going to be there, then there, and then back again. And then it'll just do that forever and ever. Right. Well, that just means put that 115 in here. So 115 will be 57 minus 85 cos x. And just doing that in part A gets the first mark. Well, there's only one unknown, so you just get rid of all the bits and pieces. Get rid of that, get rid of that, then get rid of that. So bringing that over, I've got 85 cos x equals, now you could put down 57 minus 115, or you could just subtract it straight away. So that's going to be minus 58. So cos x is going to be, take that across and divide, negative 58 upon 85. That gets a mark. So to get x itself, I'm going to do inverse cos of negative 58 upon 85. Now putting that into your calculator will give you the right answer, just from the nature of the cosine graph. But it's not going to help you with the second bit. So you're as well just doing that the sort of standard way of just take the positive amount and use your little cast diagram. So typing that in, and I can't think of any significance of the fact that those digits are just reversed. Typing that in will give you the acute angle to put into your cast diagram. 46.97, I'll just round it off to two decimal places there. So that's what you'll pop into the diagram which is the better way, because that'll give you the answer for the first part and the second part. So, all sine tan cos. So where is the cos negative? It's negative in this quadrant, so that acute angle could be there, making that the first angle. And it's positive there, so it's also negative here. So that would be the second time it reached this negative value. So you get both answers from this. So your first answer is going to be this one here. 180 minus it. So that's 180 minus 46.97. So that will be 03 and a three, 133. So I'll just round it off to 133.0. But not degrees. If you, put, if you put the degrees in, they're not going to mark you wrong for that. But X doesn't have any units in it because X was just the number of the degrees. So that's the mark for the first one. When is it next at that height? Well, it just follows on from that, doesn't it? So when it gets round to here, which is when it gets round to here, so that's going to be when x is, this time it's going to be 180 plus that. So it'll be 180 plus the 46.97. So it'll be 226.97, which I think I'll just call 227.0.